Hi there, my name is uh, Hisham Murad. I do product and technical marketing here at the Ansible Business Unit over at Red Hat. Um, and today I'm gonna walk through a quick uh, demo uh, video around cloud operations in the AWS cloud. So obviously there are a lot of different hybrid cloud automation use cases, right? So when you think about Ansible and the Ansible automation platform, there's so much you can do, right? There's network automation, security automation, application automation, um, integration with ITSM, you know, edge use case automation. There's just so much that you can do. And here we kind of highlight in three different buckets, if you will, the different types of high level use cases that you can perform. In one of the previous videos that I've done, I've actually highlighted and focused in on uh, infrastructure orchestration, provisioning, deprovisioning, et cetera. Today, I thought that I'd focus a little bit more on, around cloud operations. Okay, so let's touch on what are the, some of the things that I want to uh, get into in a little bit more detail. So when it comes to cloud operations, often it's easy to kind of lose sight of what's happening in the cloud and, and then you can get, you know, some runaway costs. So it's really important to be aware of some of these things. So this is another opportunity to introduce automation into the environment. So again, here I'm in the AWS cloud, and one of the things I'd like to do is really look for any resources, specifically EC2 instances is what I'm gonna walk through, that don't have any owner tags, right? So if there's no owner tag on a specific EC2 instance, I'm gonna actually perform automation around that, and we'll get into more details of what we're gonna do here. The second use case is around uh, turning off use cases on a on a sleep schedule. So if you there's some resources that you don't need at a specific point in time during a day or on a weekend, for example, being able to you know shut those off and have them automatically uh, come back online when they are needed. So let's uh, jump in from here. So what I'm going to do is jump right into the demonstration. So here I am in my AWS account. And really quickly, a few things I'd like to show while we're here is I have these instances and you can see here the owner tag is actually um, empty. So I don't have an owner tag, which is against our best practices within our group. Okay. And, but here they are, they're running, right? So somebody's actually spun these up. So that's one thing that I want to be able to automate and address. So I'm not having to think about it. I want this to happen automatically, you know, uh, for me. So how would we go about addressing this type of activity? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it in Ansible Automation Platform, and then we'll jump into a little bit more detail in terms of how we achieve this. And then we'll come back to the second use case, which focuses on this sleep schedule, which was that second portion. Okay. So let's just jump right in. Here I am into Ansible Automation Platform. So I've already filtered on my AWS resources, uh, templates, and workflows, okay? So the first one you see here is enforce an owner tag, okay? And then that is a job template, but what we've done is we've actually taken that single job template and we've actually built it into a workflow. So you can see right underneath it is enforce owner tag workflow. Well, let's take a look at the visualizer for that workflow. Remember, a workflow is you being able to easily uh, connect multiple uh, playbooks or, or, or job templates in one workflow and they can be they can run in parallel they can run in serially right so there's different ways you can do this but here what I'm doing in this specific workflow essentially what I'm doing is I'm running the exact same job template but multiple times each time I'm running it against each of the regions where I and running different EC2 instances, okay? So it's really as simple as that, the exact same job template, just running different regions. So if I click here on edit, I'll just show you very quickly. I've highlighted the node uh, alias to be East US one. If I click on next, why? That's because a specific node is in region uh, East US one, right? And then again, all these are going to run in parallel. So let's go ahead and actually execute this, right? Now, um, the resources that I have that are currently untagged, I actually created them in East US too. And so let's see what happens here while this runs. So this is running, again, it's running all these regions, right, in, in, in parallel. And if we go to the details, we'll be able, or the output in a moment, we'll see the output of each of the job templates within this workflow. So it's still, it's still going, so we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, let me show you how easy it is to leverage this. So really quickly, I'm just jumping over 
to uh, the Ansible Cloud GitHub account. And we have a folder here, AWS EC2 Operational Tasks, which you can actually take advantage of these and, and copy and modify and update for your own uh, use cases. But you can see here, one of the use cases that we're working with is a missing tag, right? Specifically missing the owner tag. So if I scroll down here, so all we're doing is we're saying, hey, what's the region which we're passing the region or use default, but we have passing those different regions in each of the nodes of that workflow. So we're just basically grabbing all the running instances. Okay. Once we have the running instances, we're determining which ones have this owner tag as undefined, right? So now we have that list. And then at that point, what we're doing is we're going to display the missing tag result to the screen. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to take all those instances and uh, iterate through them and essentially just stop them all. Okay. That's exactly what we're doing. Look at this, you know, very small, you know, 28 line playbook, very easy to do. And you can automate this within your environment. Now let's go back over here. Now this is complete. So the, again, the indicator here in green that the workflow is complete. If I go back to the jobs, again, I can see the workflow as complete. This one here, I know that was that last one in my list, which was the uh, US East number two uh, region. And so here you can see again in this US East two region, sorry. Um, and then we can look at the instance. I need to clean up the output here. So forgive me for that. But here you can see the uh, I dash and then the instance ID, the instance ID over here and the instance ID. So it actually detected that we have these three AWS instances with no owner tag. Okay, so what happened, right? So we actually move on and actually stop these untagged in this region. Okay, well, let's double check on that. Let me go over here and back in my uh, AWS console, I'm just gonna do a quick refresh. And now you can see that these are stopped, right? So we actually stopped them. Now, this is great. Now, remember, there's more that you can potentially do depending on your, your use cases. Maybe after a month, you may wanna come and terminate them. Maybe you wanna terminate, terminate them immediately, right? So you have that option. Now, what I just showed you, I had to go in and launch that specific workflow. But again, so while that task is automated, we can even take it to the next level, right? So if I go back to the Ansible automation platform here and we go to schedules, now you can see here, I actually turned this off on purpose so it doesn't run because we have this automatically running every hour and I didn't want that to, to happen or trigger while I'm actually uh, recording this video, right? So I didn't want to do that. So you can see here, this is that owner tag workflow schedule is basically us being able to go in and say, you know what, we want to actually do this on an hourly basis. And it'll basically show you the frequency, the time zone that you want to run this in. Now, again, it doesn't show the next 10 times here. That is simply because if I go back, I had this uh, turned off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back on because I do, in fact, want this to run automatically on its own. Okay. So very cool, right? Now, another use case that I had mentioned is this uh, sleep schedule. So you can see here, sleep schedule. So I have some resources. It says sleep schedule set to true. Now, what we do here is if I go back again to templates, and very quickly, I will basically filter on AWS again. Now you can see that I have a tag sleep schedule to running and then a workflow associated with that job template. And I also have one here that the sleep schedule to stopped and then put the tag, you know, again, the sleep schedule stopped workflow. Okay, so I can do these now against all the regions again that I have with a single playbook, a, sim a single job template that I can now build a workflow around it, around it and have it go and trigger in parallel against different regions within my AWS environment. It's very, very powerful here. Okay. Um, now, having said that, now here's what's cool about this. So very similar to what we just did with the other one where, you know, we have all the regions um, and we basically just go through and run it through each of the regions that we have. And if we see any that say, hey, the sleep schedule is, is true, but if it is true, at a certain time we turn it off and then another time we turn it back on. Now, let me show you what that looks like. So again, here, 
What that really is, is the sleep schedule. So what we do is we just have this trigger at 9 p.m. So it goes through and anything that we have sleep schedule set to true, it'll go in and turn them all off at 9 p.m. And then we have another one here, the 6 a.m. start. And so at 6 a.m., it just simply goes back and wakes all these guys back up, right? So again, we have a lab environment. We don't need to leverage these resources during the night or on the weekend. So we actually you know, have them turn off for us. So we have a number of operational uh, automation jobs that essentially help us do this. We feel obviously that we can save a lot of money by doing this and hopefully you can as well by taking advantage of this type of cloud operations automation. Okay, so let me show you what that uh, playbook looks like as well. So very quickly, what that one is, is this one is a sleep schedule off. We are looking, we're filtering on the ones that have the sleep schedule of, of true. And if they have the sleep schedule as true, again, we're just making sure that those instances go to sleep. So turn off those sleeping instances. You can see that here. Again, really short job template or playbook wrapped in a job template. We wrap it in a workflow to function and run against multiple regions within my AWS cloud. And it helps me save money um, within the different regions that we operate within. Now, not everybody may leverage this unique use case here, but it's a good use case if you have a lab environment or something like that. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to point out is remember, because you are doing automation in the AWS cloud, we have the AWS collection that allowed that you can go ahead and take advantage of and also leverage for examples of additional automation tasks that you can perform within your AWS cloud. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and I really hope you go to redhat.com, download Ansible Automation Platform and give it a try within your environment. Thank you and have a wonderful day.